Hello guys and welcome to episode 8 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as the Warriors of Chaos on very hard difficulty. Today we're going to be moving on after raising Björning's Gathering and we will be heading towards Grayling Moot to see if we can awaken another tribe. Previously we did awaken scaling but I think Throg's just going to destroy them soon. Everything was pretty much done for this turn except from one thing and that is recruiting a couple of exalted heroes. I wanted to make sure that I did do this sooner than later just so that I could rank them up. Let's see which ones we get. This guy is disciplined. He gives extra leadership and melee attack for all units in the army. This one gives extra Laura e uh, leadership aura size and this one is extra charge bonus and weapon strength. So this guy would be great in actual melee. Uh, this guy more decent just as a passive buff. I think since we'll probably embed him in the next army we get, getting the disciplined guy would not go too badly. So we'll grab him and we'll wait for the other ones to re-roll and we might recruit a second one since I noticed we have a cap of two and we may as well get both. And he does come at level four so let's level him up. Initially I think I'm actually going to put points into Assault Garrison. We'll put a point into Specialist the extra hero action success chance. It may also be worth going for assassination because I will be trying to use him to do these actions as we go. Maybe just go for blade master for now so we'll have this guy just assault the garrisons ahead of time. Now everything is done so we'll move on. I'll have a look again next turn to see if there's any other exalted heroes that will give us decent buffs. And maybe we could even embed one in Colex army. But I think the fastest way to level them up is have them outside of the army and just do agent actions on a couple of settlements over and over and over again. I think Scaling's still alive. They are indeed, and they've actually built an army, so I assume Throg just walked off. Well, I'm fine with that. Uh, let's have Farmor head ahead of us towards Grayling Moot to assault the garrison. And we will have Kolek uh, move 25% towards it. This way I can check if I need to upgrade any buildings, which I can. Okay, we can actually upgrade the Unholy Legion to the Ruinous Warhost. I'm definitely going to do that to reduce upkeep cost and also give us the extra horde growth, which is the main thing, because it will allow me to pick up these other buildings sooner than later. Of course, we could wait and just use the current growth we have uh, towards whatever building we want next, but... Getting the extra horde growth in the long run I think is not too bad. As for Kuha, well, he can level up. He's currently got Gehenna's Golden Hounds. Upgrading that would increase effect duration, but that's not really something that's terribly useful since it will just mean that they might end up coming into our lands or our lines even. I think instead... I'm going to get the Plague of Rust and Glittering Robe and we'll move on towards the Transmutation of Lead, Final Transmutation, Earthing and Magical Reserves. Final Transmutation is really strong actually. That's it, let's move on. The other good thing about having these agents is I think we can make them help us spread corruption
The dwarves did confederate Kalak Kadrim, which is not good. This is actually kind of annoying. But I'm hoping it's because Kalak Kadrim's weak and not because the dwarves are strong. Even so, it will make the dwarves stronger, and that's not good. Alright, onwards to Grayling Moot. Army in range to attack. I think we're just short. Yeah, we're just short. You can see the little arrow there. I think it also makes the move indicator on the left red when you can't actually reach. So... We'll have to go the 25%, or at least we may as well go the 25%. And I guess we could just raid. We actually go into that territory. And we raid for now. That will get us some income, since I don't think I need to build anything or recruit anything. Unless I want to replace these Chaos Warriors with more Chosen. I think that may be a bit overkill, though. I'd be better off waiting and replacing these with something like Dragon Ogres. We may as well keep those experienced Chaos Warriors for now. They're not that much worse than Chosen. Saying that, when you look at it from that perspective, that is a Chaos Warrior that's at rank 5 versus a Chosen that is unranked, and the Chosen are actually better. So maybe I should just boot them now and replace them. It's not like we don't have the spare cash or anything. <laughs> Yeah, let's boot them, and we will recruit ourselves some replacement units. I'll get another Chosen with great weapons. We can grab another normal Chosen and some Chosen with halberds to replace the ones that uh, were Chaos Warriors with halberds. We could also get the Aspiring Champions so that we get the Encourage bonus for our units, but I just really don't like how much health they have. If that unit had more health in general, then I think it would be great. We'll try and assault the garrison there. We actually failed. That sucks. Let's actually jump into our lord here and see if we can recruit another hero with a better bonus. And this guy's pretty good. Valmir Torturous. Plus five melee attack for all units in the army. This one is cunning and enables poison attacks. We'll get Valmir, I think. Seems like a, a good shout. And with him, we can also make him good at assaulting garrisons. We'll level up specialist. I think I'll just put more points into specialist. Since he won't be joining an army for a very long time, I think we'll have far more join the army first. Although I guess the plus five melee attack might be better than plus two melee attack and plus two leadership, but... It's very minimal difference. Well, it would have been in raiding stance, but encampment stance is needed for that recruitment. Scaling's trying to make some armies, but I'm pretty sure that Throg is going to smash them to pieces. He's just come back. Let's see what he does. Yeah. He destroyed them. Actually, he confederated them. Wait. Do the Norska mechanics work on vassals? That would suck if it's the case. Wow. That's going to be annoying. Yeah, that's really annoying. Not happy about that. Oh well, at least we'll still be able to get Sigvald uh, by just awakening the other tribes. But I'd like to have these tribes actually up and ready to go. 
if I can. But let's smash into Grayling Moot. Actually, let's not do that just yet. I'm going to try and assault the garrison. Critical failure. Nice one. Uh, what about this guy? Failure. Nice. Doing well, guys. Doing well. That is looking like an order resolve. And we will raise the Grayling tribe. And that will unlock the Regiment of Renown, Swords of Chaos. Loyal followers of the Ever Chosen, Maleficent Knights, dedicated with reverent faith to any and all of the Chaos Gods. LGT's capture boast battle is now plus 12% and a Dragon Bane gem. Okay. If we move on towards the mountains of Nagalfari, we can, we can probably release Varg, actually. Maybe I should just have them all released next to each other. We could probably release Scaling at Doomkeep. We could release Varg at Nagalfari Plain. I think that's probably a good idea. And we'll have these guys target the monolith of Katam so that they finish off their province. Do we need the movement? I don't think we do. I might replace the chariots here with that new unit, the Swords of Chaos. And we'll just carry on the whole way for this turn. I'm not going to bother with the 75%. With Kolek, he's now level 20. He has the Sun Eater now, which gives him the Frenzy ability. We should probably look into buffing up his weapon strength with Woundmaker. So, that means... probably get Deadly Blade. We need how many? Four in order to continue. So we'll get Deadly Blade maxed out and Hard to Hit maxed out and then we'll go to Foe Seeker, we'll get Wound Maker and that should give him a serious amount of weapon strength. We do need to complete his quest Maybe that could be a job for one of our agents, actually, because I believe it's moving an agent to a province. Maybe my exalted hero can just wander off over there. He can do a bunch of agent actions on the way to give himself some experience. And Throg's creeping back. Might try and attack Grayling Moot. Right, let's jump into Diplomacy quick. I just want to tell Clan Mulder to attack Erengrad. Uh, Bersenling may as well continue to try and say, take Shock Thraken, but probably just making the garrison really strong there for no reason. All right, let's attack Nagalfari Plain, see if we can release Varg. We can, nice. And Sigvald is now available. Perfect. Can we also attack Doomkeep in the same turn? And we'll release Scaling. That is perfect. Right, if we get them all, to target Throg, then maybe 
we will be able to destroy Windtooth. Actually, it might be better if I attack Throg and kill Throg so that he doesn't defeat the faction leaders of the vassals I just created and take them over. So we'll allow this guy to target maybe I Strike Ford instead. Yeah, Grayling can continue to attack the mon monolith of Katam, and Varg can attack Varg Camp. Right, Kolek leveled up. Then we'll put that into Deadly Blade, and Kuha can put that into Glittering Robe. Our hero is not moved. Let's try and assault the units here. That was a failure. Nicely done. <laughs> we'll carry on to the next turn. In five turns, actually. Well, four turns after this one. We will have the plus five melee attack on a bunch more units. All of our chosen. That will make our army quite a bit stronger. I wonder if there's any other factions that I can awaken. I guess there's like one for each province, maybe. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to go and attack Throg. Otherwise, he'll just keep beating on our vassals. But now we've created so many, they'll probably be able to spam armies out. We'll speed up this end turn since I only really wanted to see what Wintertooth would do. And we will hunt down Throg ourselves. I will probably have to march towards the settlement in order to be able to reinforce it should it get attacked again. So let's do that. And I'll have my hero assault the units again. And this time it was a success. Good. That levels him up nicely. Just max out, max out specialist to get that hero action cost reduction. Minus 40% will save us a lot of cash in the long run. Let's move on to the next turn. So this is where Throg goes and attacks Scaling's army and ends up confederating them in one turn. That's what I predict to happen. But then again, if Throg does go and attack Scaling, he will probably be in range of Kolek at the end of the turn and we can kill him. And after that I'm pretty sure we should be able to take over the majority of Norska with our vassals. Nah, he's doing a runner. That's good. I mean, even if we move down to Icestrake Ford and uh, raise it, it doesn't really matter. But I am going to check the other provinces and see if we can potentially get ourselves a larger number of tribes. Because it will make attacking the Empire that much easier. The Vanaheimlings have confederated with Wintertooth. Wax and Wayne. What is this? Minus six leadership. Nice. Just what I wanted. As the Great Vortex vacillates on its axis, the winds of magic fluctuate distressingly, eliciting wild-eyed portents of doom from hedge wizards throughout your empire. The troops are cowed by these omens, and leadership has de decreased faction-wide. So we couldn't actually awaken a tribe at Björning's Gathering, I don't think, so this province is probably null and void. 
we might be able to get one at Saal encampment. I think Saal is a faction. So we might be able to. But let's chase down this chap. Honestly, I might just have this guy jump into Colex army for now and we'll start putting points into training. Since the extra experience per turn might actually be helpful for leveling up these chosen. Although saying that, was it 25 per turn? Is not actually that much. Now nah, we'll just keep using him to attack Throg. The other guy who we're waiting on, far more Death Dealer, can be the one to go and explore and complete Colex's quest, Star Crusher, because we need to move a character to the Goromadni Mountains for that, which is all the way over here. So there we go. We'll upgrade maybe assault units. And we'll carry on after Throg here. This is giving these factions time to build up anyway, which is good. And when we get to Ice Drake Ford, we'll go to Longship Graveyard, we'll go across to the Bay of Blades, and then maybe go up to uh, Sal Encampment. Although I can probably just release Sal at the Bay of Blades if I can. And after that, it'll probably be up to Aisling's Conclave. I believe Aisling is definitely a tribe that we can awaken. I wonder if the Vanna Heimlings count. Where would have they been? Are they further north? I think they might be up here? Not sure. Anyway, we will end the turn. And speed it up. Since we will see Throg move regardless. But we're in a much better position now than we were at the start of the episode. We can also now get Sigvald. So at some point I will build myself a second army. Not too keen on that movement from Throg. I was hoping he'd move down to Ice Drake Ford, but it doesn't look like he has. I mean, this does mean that Scaling can probably go and take Ice Drake Ford, but I'm going to have to chase that army so that they don't defeat our vassals. Middenland has been destroyed. Looks like Hochland destroyed them after we made them much weaker by flattening Middenland. Oh, Throg's in range. Okay, let's try and attack him. He'll probably retreat. Yep. And I just moved the wrong way by accident. We'll just go and hug him. We'll get as close as we can. And just make it very difficult for him to go the other way. We can always go down to Trollford and, and destroy that. And maybe go up to Serpent Jetty and stuff. Or we could come back down and round or jump onto the water even. That would be quicker. Go all the way down to Longship Graveyard or the Bay of Blades. Cool. Yeah, Falmir. Maybe we'll have him head uh, towards the objective now. Because I don't need to keep assaulting the units of Throg since he's not really replenishing that much. If at all, actually. It's funny how on the campaign map Throg looks bigger than Kolek. When in battle, I'm pretty sure Kolek is about twice the size of Throg. <laughs> That's a classic old Total War Warhammer thing versus Warhammer 2. <laughs> oh, large army. Gonna sack some of the Dwarven lands. I like that a lot. You can keep doing that, Wintertooth. Wipe out those stunties. Are they going to take Erengrad or not? They seem to be lining up for it. 
Oh, Hochland has declared war on the Empire? What's going on? Hochland out of nowhere? <laughs> I've never seen Hochland do well. They're normally one of the first to go. <laughs> they just get swallowed up by Ostland or something. Crazy. Right, Farmor is ready to go. So he can probably the one be the one to jump into Kolek's army. Let's do that. And we'll get rid of one of these chosen. And uh, yeah, he can take that place. Get in there and start training. And we'll carry on after Throg. His training ability will be pretty trash to start with. Let's have a look. Does he actually have any effect of training until we put a point into it? Surely there's a baseline. Anyway, since he's in the army, we may as well give him some equipment if we have any spare. Dawnstone is fine. Let's move on to the next turn, since I don't think Valmir can do anything. The scaling still have their war target. Hopefully they will try and carry it out at least. As we continue to chase down Throg. Frick is going to smash Fort Stragov. Like, I'm very happy if Windertooth wants to hit Skaven or the Dwarves. Like, that's perfect, honestly. As long as they're not attacking our vassals, it gives our vassals time to build up their armies and take more land. Supernatural prowess has been complete, and Kuha has gained the student follower. Now for our research. I think we're going to go to Pledges of the Dark Gods, and then towards Infernal March. For the extra campaign map movement range and casualty replenishment rate. That will help us catch up to people like Throg here, who keep trying to run away. Go towards evasion. I might actually want to get scouting leveled up at some point, so that we get the extra magic item drop chance, since we have a very limited amount of the items at the moment. Right, let's assault the garrison. That's good. And he's leveled up again. And we don't really need to upgrade these anymore. I think we're just going to upgrade training. Since it looks like he's going to jump into Sigvald's army when we make it. But now we're not really making any money since we're chasing Throg. The reason we're chasing Throg is so that he doesn't just confederate our vassals overnight. And they definitely have war coordination targets, so I'm hoping that they follow our orders. Because we want them to take those provinces. Now, I want Throg to stay where he is. If he runs off again, it's going to get quite annoying. We will just destroy Trollford anyway. Okay, 
If he moves up to Serpent Jetty, we'll have to destroy that on the way round as well. We could also jump onto the water and pick up that treasure. Did Soyshank just win? I think they did. I think Wolfric just kind of suicided into that settlement. Right, we have two factions mobilizing, that's Scaling and Varg, which is good. And mission issued, eliminate Throg in battle, we get the Collector, which is nice. But that is income from sacking settlements, which we never do. We can't sack a settlement, so that's not ideal, is it? Let's jump in and fight this on the battle map. Kolek versus Throg. I would auto-resolve it, but I think it would destroy at least one unit. But this way we do get to see our new Regiment of Renown, the Swords of Chaos, anyway. I am exalted. Our exalted hero has joined us as well. There he is. Pretty messed up face, honestly. And where's the cavalry? Here they are. They just look like a bunch of mini Archeons. Saying that, their heads are like on fire as well. Which doesn't look very comfortable, if you ask me. But there we go. We'll keep the Chaos Warriors of Great Weapons behind. We can have the cho Chosen with Halberds on the flanks. They will have to come towards us anyway, since we do have the Hell Cannons. I mean, I could probably move back a bit because of that. Although we're already kind of on the hill anyway, so I'm not going to bother. Okay, let's start the battle. Just keeping my units relatively close together. This way we have greater control over our front line. hit those Marauders a little bit. I definitely want to keep hitting the Marauder Champions because they're probably one of the strongest units that they have. I mean, of course they do have the uh, Ice Trolls, but hitting those I'm not entirely sure would be the best bet with the Hell Cannons. We can try. Let's fire a couple shots and see how much damage we do to those ones. It's not actually too bad. And that did absolutely destroy their... Yeah, it destroyed their morale as well. Leadership. The skin wolves are pretty good. I think they're actually anti-large. Uh, let's just pause it a sec because I need to make sure that my hell cannons aren't firing into our men. Um, we'll target the ranged units now. Although saying that, we could probably fire another one at the Norsk and Ice Trolls on the right. Uh, let's get these Chosen involved now. 
And we'll bring down some magic here. I can also have Kolek charge forwards. Although I'm probably going to have him fight off Throg. So he can bring down his lightning over here where it's building up. Oh nice, we will be able to engage the Norsegan Ice Trolls with Chosen with Halberds, which is perfect. Let's uh, withdraw our cavalry and just let the Dragon Ogres continue to fight on there. On this side, I'm quite happy with the Gorby's Chariots just tanking the Norsegan Ice Wolves as the missiles come in from the Marauder Horsemen. Uh, we can probably focus on these Marauder Champions actually with a couple of shots. Let's just run off these uh, Ice Wolves and we'll have these guys come around the back. I think actually the uh, Hell Cannons have just annihilated these guys. Oh well, in we go. I'm not sure why those guys are running out, honestly. Let's get some more magic in here. We'll give the buff of armor to Kolek as he goes in on Throg. And uh, we'll bring down some more magic here onto these guys. Can we use his ability yet? It's almost off cooldown. I think Throg's leadership's not the best, so he might route with the rest of his men. Let's get my Exalted Hero to start hitting Throg as well. And we'll just start chasing down all of these guys. That's pretty much it. Nice chain route. Throg's going to be dead anyway, so we don't need to chase him down. Job well done. Now this does mean that Throg will probably end up popping up elsewhere and maybe attacking my armies again, or at least my vassals again. But for now, he's going to be out of action for a little while. a decent battle. Plenty of loot gained. I like that a lot. And we will probably raise this for the cash. And we got a gleaming pendant. I like that. And the mission successful. From defeating Throg we get bonus versus large and weapon strength plus 3%. A very good bonus for Kolek. Start putting those points onto hard to hit. Can't really say it'd be that hard to hit. He's massive, but there we go. Put the point into training. And we can carry on. As for our hero, we'll move on to the next settlement. Hit that on the way. I might have to be a little bit careful doing this, because if he ends up getting like critical failure somewhere over here, that'd be really annoying. When we get close, I might just stop doing the actions and just run to the objective. But unfortunately guys it has been my time so I'm gonna leave it here. In the next episode what we'll do is probably jump on the water I think and travel down and around. We'll go and maybe attack the Bay of Blades try and get Sarl encampment 
as a tribe and maybe Aisling as well if they can be that is but for now that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye